Now, sadly, I can't with, be with you in Manchester today. I'd be very interested to hear the outcomes of this seminar. I belong to an era that actually predates educational technology. In fact, when, when I was first involved in this work, we were experimenting with non-digital um, audiovisual aids, uh, resources for learning, uh, program learning, uh, and, and teaching machines. And then along came this thing called educational uh, technology. I did quite a bit of work in the early days with the National Council for Educational Technology and NSET design, uh, defined this as the design, development, application and evaluation of systems, methods and media for learning. And I want you to particularly focus on those two first words, systems and methods. And in fact, in this definition, it's really based upon the Greek uh, concept of techne, which is actually the application of knowledge as opposed to uh, pure, pure theory. The Association for Education, Communication and Technology in America, they defined educational technology as the theory and practice of design, development, utilization and management, remember that, and evaluation of processes and resources for learning. Don Ely said most professionals in EdTech are change agents. And one definition he said of educational technology specifies a sociological theory base linked to practice that includes diffusion, adoption, implementation and institutionalization of innovation and addresses issues of dissatisfaction with the status quo, the availability of knowledge and skills, the availability of resources and time, rewards and incentives and leadership. Di Laurelard, in Rethinking uh, Higher Education, uh, suggested that knowledge management activities are needed to ensure competitive advantage, probably today we'd say quality uh, assurance, through innovation. Now, I think those remarks are really very important because they show how, in the early days of educational technology, we, we were seeing this as a very, very broad uh, field. Then we have the end of uh, National Council for Educational Technology and the arrival of Vector, resulting from the merger of the National Council and the Microelectronics Educational Support Unit. Now in my view, this focus on ICT was a retrograde step, because if we go back to organisations like the National Council for Educational Technology, it would address issues ranging from uh, copyright of non-print materials to the establishment of library resource centres, radio and television, uh, and to the establishment of regional support centres for schools, such as the Avon Learning Resources Centre for, for, for Schools or the Centre in Cluid in, in Wales. Now, when we look at today's papers for, for BJET, we find that the prime focus is on the tools rather than the systems and the methods. And I have to say that most of the papers seem to me to be small-scale, one-off, before and after studies. And one unfortunate aspect of this is that BJET, like uh, some other journals, has become a magnet for Taiwanese doctoral students and those students who are seeking tenure and, and promotion. Most of the papers are concerned with higher education, very few are concerned with non-formal education, and when you get down to something like educational technology for training staff in, for example, small to medium enterprises, um, virtually, virtually nothing. So, 40 years on, what evidence do we have that all of the theories, new methods and investment of time and money have actually improved education? Okay, John Cowan says to me, well look, ICT has improved engineering education. Uh, technology has certainly increased access and equity in open and distance learning. I think one can say safely that the Institute of Educational Technology at the Open University contributed greatly to, to the idea of instructional design. But where is the evidence of improved longer term outcomes and impacts on schooling, on higher education, on training, on professional development and so on? Why, after all these years, do we still find some pretty obvious systemic failures in, for example, ICT integration in schools? Now, 
I feel that these points call for refocusing by BJET. We need to have evidence that EdTech is, is better, more sustainable, more cost-effective. Now let me give you an idea of the kind of study I would like to see. And this is a, a project run by the Commonwealth of Learning in Vancouver. It's called Lifelong Learning uh, for Farmers. And it involves systems and methods and media to improve farming uh, in, th in, the third, in third world countries. It's not the traditional top-down extension. It's a participative system. It involves the farmers in defining the needs and finding the solutions to, to those needs. The project's actually a partnership of coal, uh, non-government organization, banks, and a telecommunications uh, company. Deals were struck between all of these in an inaugural project in Tamil Nadu in, in India. And it focused on women goat herders. It was community-based and it used blended learning combined with M-learning. Now, when we, there have been a number of studies into this, and when we look at the, the findings over five years, we find that a large number of villagers regularly attended sessions. A large number of learning materials were developed and used. There were many more bank loans to, to, to farmers, 60% uh, 60, 60 of whom were, were women. And these bank loans were linked to the, the training outcomes. There was an increase in the total credit and turnover of all the local enterprises. Uh, the women farmers had repaid 90% of the loans and interest in three years, not five years, as had been planned for. Now, all of this was done at a cost of only $80,000 to the Commonwealth of Learning most of which went on local consultancies. All the other resources came from uh, local sources. So the qualitative findings of this, we find that <clears throat> there were improvements in goat rearing, market options and prices, family income and circumstances. Other villages and groups became involved with little help from the original Lifelong Learning for Farmers team. It became a self-reinforcing model. These farmers now develop their own M-learning materials in, in Tamil and develop their own training strategies and materials. There was evidence of higher levels of empowerment and cognitive social capital uh, than with other self-help groups. A meeting of the stakeholders attracted 6,000 participants. 25,000 people signed a petition to the Indian banks and the Indian government asking for further investment in credited ICT-based learning for self-help groups. This model has now transferred into Sri Lanka, Mauritius, Papua New Guinea and Uganda. And the interesting thing is now, how does this translate into di different social, geographical and cultural uh, settings? Okay, so what I'm saying here is I believe that BJET should try to focus more on getting evidence of systemic adoption uh, of sound pedagogical principles, uh, leadership, management, partnership issues, evidence of significantly improved outcomes out and impacts, not simply focusing on individual uh, short-term case studies and it should cover all uh, sectors of education and training. I say this because such findings are clearly very much needed and this would make a significant contribution to the field and would help make BJET an outstanding and unique uh, publication. So if it is agreed that the agenda needs to be changed then the thing that needs then to be to consider is what strategies and what steps need to be taken to actually achieve this. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.